it really was about my mindset that was blocking me mm-hmm. rather than it hadn't it had very little to do with my skill yeah yeah my skills as a, as a songwriter or like it was just that I had these negative thought patterns that were just in, in instantly shutting down these creative ideas as soon as they started so they just never got anywhere let alone to a finished yeah. stage What's the matter with you anyway? The girl that they want, she's some. Welcome to the Musician's Secrets podcast. Made. Today I have the amazing singer, songwriter, and producer Elise Cabray with me today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This has been a long time coming. I've been really excited to come on your your podcast i'm a i'm a happy listener and um yeah really excited to come and chat to you i appreciate that yeah it's been it's been such a long journey it feels like but it we've only like we've got in touch like what maybe two months ago not even i think yeah actually i don't know yeah, probably about two months, I think. Two months, right? And yeah. The funny thing is how we got in touch was through all like music and like mental health and um, yeah. through Shoshona, basically, um, that has been on this podcast a while. <laughs> it was like probably <laughs> one of the first ones I've interviewed. And so it was just like really funny because you got in touch with Shoshona once and then when I was talking with Shoshona she told me about you and then I got in touch with you and then you got back in touch with me and it was like this kind of really fun thing that kind of developed just because we all love music and yeah the mental health aspect it kind of like heals and incorporates and um the power the healing power of music really Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I was so excited when you said that you'd like that somebody in a different country had mentioned me to you, who's also <laughs> in a different country. I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> that is really cool. It's just like, that is the power of social media. It's just amazing that, um, you know, like, uh, yeah, it's, it's connecting people that have got a really common interest and a common passion. Yeah. Um, whereas, I would never we you know we would never have met never otherwise met. so no it's really under cool. normal circumstances we have, would have never met because like Shoshana's from England I'm from Germany you're in Australia right now so we're yeah. just like like even not even yeah. on the same <laughs> continent right and you know but this is still happening and so I'm just so so excited uh because I'm just I'm just generally just I love what you're doing um with you know well, your you. name and also with daughter um and you know your music as well that I got to listen to and um it's these are exactly those are like people and artists that I personally just love and support and I'm just like you know what these are people that should be you know more out there should be having you know more influence if that's you know what that, that's the that's a bit of a buzzword at the moment yeah, but yeah buzzword, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. Um, yeah uh yeah and so that's that that's what this podcast is for is to like get yeah. get everyone like on here and kind of start a conversation and um and I always ask people when I get them on the podcast if there's anything particular they want to talk about um and of course you <laughs> said like your hot topic is like the mental health aspect which is why we connected so well because that's something yeah. very passionate as well um so for people that don't know you um this is always what I ask just introduce yourself you can take as yep. much time as you want don't rush through it so I guess you have a very interesting story um I had a privilege to go through your course your online course that you're kind of building out right now um yep. so I, I can I kind of know your story but for for people that don't know anything about you just run us through that like from beginning to who you are oh you want me to go back to go like, where it all out. began kind of I want to know everything right, cool. I want to know everything okay. yep as much time as you want to so don't okay. <laughs> don't <rush>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna give you the time now <laughs> um wow I'm just trying to think of where to start so I I've always loved music. Like as a kid, I was always singing and um, loved performing and that sort of thing. But I never really took it seriously until I was about 14 when I started playing guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, And 
I mean, starting with talking about this, the mental health side of things. So I had a pretty rough time when I was uh, around that age. I had uh, quite severe anxiety and I was having panic attacks to the point that I couldn't get out of the car when I mum would drop me off at school. So I missed out on a whole year of school because I was just so anxious and um, really struggling with depression and ended up with uh, anorexia and was very unwell for quite a few years um and that it was around that time that I sort of discovered guitar which gave me um an outlet I guess well it gave me a lot of things um but yeah I I it I I absolutely got obsessed with it so it was like that became like I poured my identity into this being a musician and being a songwriter and I was like I treated um, the bands that I was listening to, like gods, like I was like, I want to be like these people. Like they have, it was almost like a ticket out of that reality that I felt like I was trapped in, yeah. like wanting to be a rock star, you know, performing music on stage to screaming fans. And, um, you know, it, that fantasy, which I'm sure lots of people have, um, just seemed like this uh, dream life that I just wanted so much. And so I, yeah like most people I started you know wanting to write my own songs wanting to be rich and famous um, <laughs> but that took me on a a really long and bumpy journey with with music um it hasn't all been like I, I learned guitar and lived happily ever after it was a lot of a lot yeah. of struggles and, yeah. and hard lessons in between that's, but that's um, the normal way <laughs> yes that's that's exactly right um I mean I'm going to preface this with I absolutely love music and I it, I am so grateful that I discovered like that I picked up that guitar at that age yeah. and and um that's just become what I've like that is my life now um so even though I'm not I, I didn't quite get the rich and famous thing um it's become so much more than that um which I saw it that that all I could see at the time was the fame side of it but now I'm like wow there is just so much depth um, to being a musician, which is wonderful. Um, but yeah, I wanted, so I wanted to be a songwriter, um, from the get-go and I, but unfortunately really struggled with writing songs. Mm. So I had probably the worst case of writer's block I think a person could have. Um, I was like, like I was obsessed. I wanted to write songs so bad and I would study, I've read every book on songwriting. I've like done all these little courses and I just thought that like more information was the answer. Like to, I just needed to know, like I needed better skills. That was why I couldn't write songs. Mm -hmm. So I was just constantly like information hungry and just getting really, really frustrated because I couldn't, like nothing I did was good enough. Yep. Um, I'd come up with an idea and it would be like, this was basically my formula was like, um, cause I was obsessed with Metallica at the time. They were my favorite band um, <laughs> when, I, when I first started getting guitar. So my, like the way to measure myself and, and how good a, an idea I had was, was either it was as good as Metallica or it wasn't. And that was like, it's oh, either no. a success or a failure. Uh, which oh, no. is really not, it, I do not recommend this mindset at yeah. all. Um, so that was like, um, yeah, it was, I was constantly comparing my early stage ideas from someone who'd never written a song before oh, um, going, yeah. is this as good as these yeah. musicians that are like, you know, mega successful. Yeah. Um, and of course I couldn't win anyway, because even if it did sound as good as Metallica, it sounded too much like them. So it wasn't yeah. original. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, so I just full like writers and stuff. They're like not the only one. Like we forget sometimes no. that you know they're not the only ones that like. If you look at the the credits, it's like how many songwriters have been sitting on that one song, right? Like, exactly. And the the producer and yeah. and um, ah, oh, it and it, it, the song itself has gone through like months of polishing and yeah. like redrafting and before you ever hear it on a record and it's got like world-class engineers making it sound you know amazing yeah. like little 14 year old me in my bedroom yeah. trying to like you know it's just not it's not realistic yeah. um but yeah so I struggled to write songs for about 
five years. It was, I think it was about five years before I actually finished my first song. Wow. Um, credit to me, I was stubborn. I was like, I am not giving up. That's good. Um, yeah, yeah, but it really was about my mindset that was blocking me mm-hmm. rather than it hadn't, it had very little to do with my skill. Yeah. Yes. My skill as a, as a songwriter or like it was just that I had these negative thought patterns that were just in, in instantly shutting down these creative ideas as soon as they started. So they just never got anywhere, let alone to a finished yeah. stage. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that took a long time to learn. Um, but I'm really grateful that I've had that experience as much as it was really difficult at the time. I think I, I now um, it's given me a lot of compassion and mm-hmm. understanding um, to yeah. what other artists that are struggling with similar uh, mindset issues particularly um, so that's something that I can really help people with now, which is I will get to that in a minute. That's yeah. sort of my become my calling, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I yeah from there I, I started writing my own songs eventually, and um, yeah I, I I did I um, advanced diploma in music, um, and then went on to do a degree in music industry as well because I just loved it. Like I tried other career paths like real jobs, yeah, um, but. I, <laughs> It just doesn't. It just wasn't. I ended up like I did a um a TAFE course in conservation land management because I love nature, uh-huh. and I thought you know that could be my real job. But um I ended up doing my end of year biology oral presentation in song. Like I wrote. <laughs> I wrote the, the entire presentation in a song. So I got like, I got up there with my guitar and sang about this Malienia wren and it, the wow. conservation plan that was gonna- That is cool. That yeah, is so cool. That, that was like my, my turning point where I was like, you know what? Maybe I should be studying music. Um, oh, that's yeah. cool. That's when you know you're a real- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of- little hint here Uh, (laughs) (laughs) the music might be the calling there I did have another moment um during that that course where um we had to study for an exam where we'd learn all the um scientific names of all these animals so it's like um all the latin names and it was like an enormous amount of names and just memorizing these names and I was like studying going stir crazy trying to remember all these crazy names and I had a guitar in my hand and ended up writing a song called the animal classification song, <laughs> which oh, I can still fun. remember word for word now. So I remember all of those names still. And that was like over 10 years ago. Um, wow. but I, I, I wrote that like just for myself to help me memorize it and stuck yeah. it on Facebook for a joke. And then I got to tape that the next morning and all my classmates had earphones in and I was like, what is everyone listening to? And they're all cramming my song, going, this is great. So everyone ended up doing really well on that exam. How awesome is that? That is the, the coolest thing I've probably heard so far. That is, that is wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, you know, music has some really powerful effects on the brain, including our memory. So uh, the fact that I can remember both my conservation plan for the Meliemi Wren and <laughs> about, I don't know, 35, no, probably like 50 different animal classification names. But, but yeah, credit to music there. Um, cool. That's some awesome superpower right there. I, <laughs> I don't know if that doesn't... In, I've, I mean, I don't know. Music is so powerful and you're just proving it. Yeah. Like how, dang, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So I finally had that realization of, I should probably go study music. That might be the career that I'm destined to, to have. Um, yeah. yeah. So I did that, um, which I loved studying music. I met, like, it was just we were talking about uni friends before and that the community, cause yeah. I grew up like in a semi-rural area that wasn't yeah. a lot of musicians around Same. and to go to um, Melbourne, like that was a big city for me yeah. and um, just meet all of these other musicians and, and yeah. play with other musicians. It was a huge, like I had to, like 
eat a huge slice of humble pie because I was oh yeah <laughs> I was like t- growing up being told you're such an amazing singer Elisa oh, look how wonderful you are and then I get to uni and everyone's an amazing and singer or guitarist exactly or, everyone yeah. is that person that has been told <laughs> oh you're like you're amazing you're so talented and now you're in a room full of talented musicians you're like yeah yes you all of a sudden become like this small and you're like yeah what am I gonna, you know, how am I different? How am I special? How am I, you know, but yeah. Exactly. You gotta sort of yeah, redefine really. yourself because that had been my identity for yeah. so long, like being the, you know, the artistic, the singer or whatever. Yeah. So that was hard. Um and I oh, this was the worst. So I ended up like my first um first week of uni. I, never been to uni before I'd moved out of home and with all these people I'd never met and I was in group one for the performance so I had to perform to everyone that in my first very first week oh my God. um which was really really scary like it was a ton of pressure because like it's it's not like you're not performing to just a regular audience you they're yes. all your peers thank you uh, yeah yeah I I'd so, rather perform to hundreds of non-musicians, normal yep. people, hundreds and hundreds of them. But I my I've never been so nervous in my life. There were five people, they were all my teachers, and I had to perform to them. There was no <sighs> one else in the room, just those five teachers. And they just sit there with their laptops taking their notes, and you're on stage pooping your pants. <laughs> and so you're that nervous. I've never yep. been that is a whole new, oh my gosh. Uh, I know it's a whole nother level. Yeah, you totally get where I'm going from. Yeah, if anyone's I've, listening out, I've been there. Right now, yeah. I've been there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's scary, but you got to do it. You got to do it, and you get through it. No, no one's, no one dies. Thankfully, with yeah. you being a musician, at the end of the day, it might feel mortifying, but no one's life is in danger. Yeah. So, um, even if it is a train wreck, and I've had a few train wreck performances, but oh yeah you dust yourself off and move on it is okay (laughs) and usually you know what the musicians that are in the room totally get that too like if something does go wrong on stage the musicians are feeling for you going oh my gosh I know that feeling yeah 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 Yeah. they're supporting you just ignore it well well, no one you're right I know (laughs) (laughs) exactly um so yeah these it's all part of the learning experience but um yeah and then so I studied music had a met amazing people lifelong friends yeah I learned more from the friends than the actual course content mm-hmm. um which yeah, is same. you know I learned heaps from the course as well but it was the the networking that really mm-hmm. I got heaps out of yeah um but yeah so then I decided to I was going to record my first EP because I'd finally had like a collection of songs that I'd written yeah. And because they were like, it had taken me so long to write those songs. Yeah. They were my babies. Mm-hmm. I was like, I've written, you know, seven songs. And <laughs> I was so proud of myself because <laughs> I'd poured my heart and soul into them. And they were great songs. Yeah. Um, give myself some credit there. Like they were really good. And um, so I went on that whole, um, the journey of recording an EP um and I knew nothing about recording at the time um so I was very much at the mercy of big scary music producers that you know I I won't like say where I recorded but I I went to like this big fancy music studio that costs you know a hundred dollars an hour which is a lot of money (laughs) especially for someone who's a student yeah um and the guy was super intimidating the producer like he'd been doing this for 30 years and made me feel about an inch tall because you know like yeah it was not great um so I was very nervous recording and um ended up like this the songs I got out of that experience like the the recordings I got out of that were pretty much unusable they weren't what I wanted but I didn't have the confidence to Totally. say I didn't like it or how I wanted to change it or yeah um but yet another learning curve yeah um and I eventually ended up working with a couple of different producers to to finish the EP which were much better mm. um and then the whole launch and you've got to like promote it and book the yeah. venue and like sell tickets and get the like I had 
physical CDs manufactured. Mm-hmm. So they had to do like the photo shoot and all of this is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, if you get like 200 printed, it's this price. But if you go 500, 500 yeah. it's this price. So that makes more sense. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm super proud of this. And all my friends think I'm amazing. I'll sell 500 CDs. Oh, That'll no. be great. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. So again, I had these huge expectations of myself Um, and I did the launch and, you know, a normal person would have thought it was complete success because, you know, I had, I don't know, 40 people came and like it filled the room. Um, Everyone loved it. Everything went really well. Um, Did a kick-ass performance, sold a bunch of CDs, you know, it was all family and friends and whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But then me knowing nothing about marketing or the music industry really that was pretty much it for that mm. ep i'd sold a couple like more to my mum's friends like <laughs> in the following months or whatever oh, wow. um so to me crushing disappointment i felt like a total failure because i thought how it's supposed to go is you record your cd and then people hear it and fall in love with it immediately and yeah. they yeah you make millions of dollars and everybody loves you. That's how it works, right? Oh, super. <laughs> just, I can totally feel that because it's so Oh, yeah. Oh, my word. Yeah. So I, yeah, my, my interpretation of what was a very successful launch that I should have been very proud of myself of yeah. um, was complete failure. And it almost made me quit because I just thought I must, like, my, I just mustn't be good enough because... Yeah you know people aren't I, I, um yeah they're not interested or yeah it wasn't getting the reaction um from people so that was really talking about humble pie yeah. having to <laughs> swallow that and um sort of recover from that but I mean music just must be in my blood because I've had so many like crushing setbacks but yeah. I just can't leave it alone I just have to keep at it so um that was when I ended up I started daughter so um, daughter started as a podcast um because I <laughs> yes <laughs> I was listening to podcasts and uh really loved the platform um because I was driving to uni so I had a lot of time in the car listening yeah. Yeah. um loved that that audio format and um it was a great way to be exposed to all sorts of different people too like really positive influences yeah um so yeah I sort of and, it, and it's fairly cheap to get started um especially if you've already got some recording gear which it's, a lot of musicians yeah, for do have. Musicians, it's like the easiest thing you can do because exactly you got the mic you already have all like the editing stuff and you know your whatever DAW program you're using and stuff like that yeah you've sort of got some basic knowledge in audio yeah. editing and yeah exactly. it's pretty good yeah yeah so um and that around that time I was really starting to get interested in music production so the recording yeah. side of music because I've always really liked um so more electronic music not so much dance music but I liked uh like trip hop and um I really liked some industrial mm-hmm. style like really love Nine Inch Nails and um some of their experimental stuff and always been really fascinated with that side of music and I felt a bit limited by just my voice and an acoustic guitar yeah um and I really wanted that creative control over my sound because yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't really like the pressure of working with producers and the money, like it costs mm-hmm. money. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't really get my vision across with, within that time frame. So, yeah. um, started getting really into, um, music production and I actually, I went to this music night in Melbourne and I saw this artist called Kaya, um, on stage. And that was the first time I'd ever seen a female singer songwriter, on stage, it was just her and her Ableton, uh, sorry, the um, the push controller. The, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so it's like the, the a grid controller where you're triggering yeah. your loops and samples and your stuff. Sound. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So she was performing these songs that sounded like real, they were really electronic based, kind of like FKA Twigs type style mm-hmm. um, and singing and performing herself with this grid controller. I was like, what is that? That's not a guitar. <laughs> You're not even playing an instrument while doing it. Yeah. Yeah. 
so that was like that was it sounds like a really small thing but it, it yeah. was mind-blowing for me as a singer songwriter who loved electronic music to see yeah. that you know this artist on her own was on stage creating this amazing sound yeah. accompanying herself yeah. and singing her beautiful original songs yeah. um so to see that that was a possibility I was like what what um, is happening well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love when so, the aha moments happen and like the yeah. world kind of change and you're like what, what? <laughs> I didn't even know this was possible this is awesome yeah I yeah it totally happens. <laughs> doors opened everywhere like yeah it was amazing so that was I had then had the idea that I wanted to start a podcast um for uh, mainly for um women in music production mm -hmm because just to get some more role models like so because there yeah. were the, I actually like did some googling and I was like local music producers in Melbourne my local area and there was quite a few that came up I thought well why haven't I heard of these women like yeah. they're amazing yeah. um really quality um musicians like very talented so um I started that podcast as a just as a platform where I could it was really good it was like I had a, a ticket to ask go up to a walk up to a complete stranger yeah um yeah <laughs> and go hey can I pick your brains for an hour or whatever on yeah. my show and yeah. ask you all these questions yeah uh, which was wonderful yeah. uh, and they I don't think I had one refusal I think they were all um really up for it and having a podcast is the best thing you can actually do because that's my excuse to nerd out about music with everyone like hey if you want to yeah. be on here let's geek out and they're like yeah sure like <laughs> exactly and you make really strong connections with people yeah. like I'm still friends with all of the women that I interviewed on that show yeah. um I mean it was only a limited series I think I only did eight episodes or something it wasn't like a big thing but yeah. um it was it it was a stepping stone where yeah. I, I discovered how much I loved this uh, like it was a different approach to music where I could um, I feel like I was contributing and and creating something yeah. because it is really creative running a podcast. Yeah, totally. um, you have to use that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and I ended up like with more opportunities coming up to my way because I started networking and had like yeah, it was it was really good. So that was sort of how that seed got planted in my head that I maybe liked the the um, there was a maybe a business that I could start. Yeah. in music um yeah. yeah so I yeah from there daughter has developed into something quite different I'm no longer I, I would like to do the podcast again mm -hmm. um in the future but at the moment um it's not the focus mm -hmm. um but yeah so I decided that I wanted to put my um songwriting passion and knowledge to good use and mm -hmm. that my experiences with mental health and um yeah perfectionism and things like that I, I had a very unique angle to offer people that I think a, like a lot of people struggle like I mean mental health is a huge issue oh, obviously now. at the moment <laughs> oh yeah yeah absolutely and um even so I thought you know I think uh like I had this sort of uh songwriting has really helped my mental health for a number of reasons um yeah. but I I had a hunch that you know it probably was the same for other people. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to make sure because I didn't want to start a business based on just my personal experience. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to sort of really Very research this. Thing that to do. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people don't do that. They're like, oh, my opinion is, you know, the right one. And so I'm going to start that. I'm like, but you're not filling your wallet. So get <laughs> opinion from other people. <laughs> exactly. It's called market research. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So um, I started doing well, basically talking to people. Um, I did two kinds of research. I did a lot of reading on scientific journals about studies that were going on because I was really interested. Like, yeah. is this a real thing? Is this something we can prove or measure? Um, yeah. Started finding some really interesting studies um, mm -hmm. about, because um, songwriting is really interesting because it combines two, you've got the music 
side of things and music yeah. is really powerful um as, like music therapy is a huge thing because yeah. um, yeah. it really affects the brain and um, totally. has wonderful wonderful things that it does um but the songwriting also has the expressive writing side as well which is yeah. uh the lyric side of music mm -hmm. um which also like journaling um and expressive writing has a lot of um or it's showing uh amazing results in helping people to uh express themselves yeah. to um organize their thoughts uh and to be able to see like when you write something down and it's in front of you it's like taking it out of your head and you can be a lot more objective about yeah. um, what's going on so often you start writing you don't even realize what is in there yes yes yeah. 100 percent. yeah so that was huge um i thought okay well so far so good uh music is you know i might be onto something here yeah, yeah. um and then I did some like, uh, I guess, primary research where I was talking to people and, and asking them about, um, this was mainly on Facebook and through my mailing list about how um, people's experience with um, songwriting and mental health. And I got absolutely inundated with responses. So I put this post up on a few Facebook groups saying, could you tell me about um, whether songwriting has helped your mental health? I got so many responses wow. people just all saying music has saved my life music is my therapy I would yes. be I wouldn't be here yeah um some really amazing stories um so I did contact a few people um yeah. that had particularly interesting stories and oh I found out some really amazing things people are so generous with what they're willing to share yeah. um, with a complete stranger yeah. um <laughs> Yeah, wow. but I uh, like, for example, I had one guy, um, he wrote a song with a firefighter uh -huh. um, and a really tragic story. The, the firefighter turned out to a house fire and um, a, a baby actually uh, was killed in the fire uh -huh. um, and he couldn't move past that experience completely understandably that would be I can't mm -hmm. even imagine how that would what that would be like and um this guy had had um partnered with this firefighter to write a song about it mm -hmm. um which they did and giving me goosebumps right now oh, oh my I God. know I'm nearly I'm nearly tearing up just thinking oh. like yeah um and I heard the song too it's just absolutely phenomenal and it was really um the firefighter wanted to express this feeling that people were treating him like a hero or telling him he was a hero and he'd felt like he'd failed. He'd failed yeah. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, that the process of writing that song was really healing for him to get a lot of that out. Um, and he put it online and it actually got um, like, I, I don't know the, the numbers off the top of my head, but I think it was over a hundred thousand views on I think it was SoundCloud or YouTube or whatever. Yeah, and people, Ooh. you know, all over the world <laughs> oh. <laughs> were really connecting with uh -huh. um, with what he was saying and, and what he'd been through. And, um, yeah, so, like, just that alone shows the power of healing, not only for the, the this person writing the song, but yeah. also for those that mightn't have, um, the ability to express themselves so yeah. hearing music and then words and their own thoughts reflected in music um, I think is incredibly powerful in connecting people um, yeah. and you know getting people to talk about their mental health too yeah like yeah. And what they're going through and hearing that you know they're not alone mm -hmm. um, yeah so one yeah for that that's where where I were I when I was struggling with depression like mm. realizing that I wasn't the only one yeah and uh for some reason you kind of have these 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 blinds on you're like I'm I, I'm the only one with problems I'm the only one that's broken I'm the only one that's hurt I'm the only one uh you know dealing with this nobody understands me and then you know listening to music mm. I mean the, the album that kind of helped me was from Tori Ke Kelly Unbreakable Smile um mm. And I'm like, oh, she has problems too. Even though they're completely different ones. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Just me realizing that I'm not yeah. the one 
having issues that I'm not broken um, in any ways that it is actually completely normal. Nobody talks about stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Then from there, I was slowly but surely being able to heal. But, you know, so that is cool to hear, you know, that was a realization that you had as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, going back to like when I was 14 and going through those those issues I did then, like yeah. the reason why I was, I held, held uh, bands like Metallica in such high regard was yeah. because that was like the only company I had for those emotions. Like yeah. Yeah. you were you didn't have those conversations with your friends or it wasn't talked yeah. about, but I could hear in, in the lyrics of these songs that yeah. what I was feeling was reflected in those. So yeah, huge, yeah. Um, it just so powerful um yeah so yeah turns out music and mental health are quite closely linked <laughs> yeah <laughs> I had no idea either <laughs> yeah yeah and it's um I actually did a presentation the other day on this and I showed a concert of um a Lincoln Park concert with Chester Bennington um singing a song uh, called Crawling which was about his experience with depression and he was singing it like he was standing in amongst the crowd and like these people are reaching for him in tears. Everyone is singing every word to this song, like at the top of their lungs. And it's like thousands of complete strangers are all together mm -hmm. singing about their deepest, darkest struggles, you know. And I, I just think this is the power that songs have. Just give me <laughs> Oh, like, I don't know if you can see that, but <laughs> oh my gosh, I can only imagine how that like feels when you're like actually in it, but oh my gosh. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think that music has the power to help a lot of people and I wanted to be part of that. Like if I can, I can help other people whether they're musicians or not. Yeah. Um, so I've, the course that I've created is, is um, it's not just for musicians. It, it's, yeah. it assumes no prior knowledge of music, um, yeah. but totally suitable for musicians as well. Um, but yeah, I, I sort of look at it as if um, the way I teach in that course is like, I start with a lot of creative journaling because there's a lot of like proven benefits to journaling as I mentioned before yeah. um but what happens is when we're writing a journal as a lot of people do to, to deal with their um thoughts and feelings we then shut the book once we've finished and we hide it and it's a very private almost negative yeah. thing that we don't talk about but yeah. the the course that I'm structuring is about how to then turn those journal entries into lyrics yeah because once we can do that that becomes a vehicle for communication so yeah. those private entries that you you've written down become something that you can if you choose to mm -hmm. you can then share with other people and that's going to help you and and help you talk about what you're going through and it's also going to help other people who are hearing that mm -hmm. so yeah that's sort of been my um the process that I'm trying to teach yeah and um yeah I'm still still um filming at the moment but it's very, getting very close to completion and yeah. um yeah so yeah, yeah that's sort of I guess where I'm up to <laughs> it was a very yeah, long-winded story I <laughs> no like that's what this podcast is for is to people to talk about their stories because that's what 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 you know you I think you already you know knocked down a lot of misconceptions that are inside of the music industry where we have these yeah wrong expectations sometimes yeah. or unrealistic expectations because that's what the media shows us right that's what yes we see on tv that's what we hear on the radio and that's what we think is normal when the reality looks very different and that's exactly. why i have this podcast is literally to bring so many different musicians on here as possible from all different walks of life with different stories so you can mm. see what's actual normal <laughs> this is like this is what what, what like, that the biggest misconception I think is this all or nothing mentality it's like either yeah. you're the next Ed Sheeran and you know Beyonce or you're the starving musician and I'm like yeah how is that healthy or realistic in any way like there's yeah. so much room in between 
Yeah. And for some reason, that's what the expectations are in the music industry, right? And I'm like, insane success or complete failure. Exactly. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what? What? Yeah. And, and that that was my expectation to be real. It's like, oh, okay, I need so I need to get signed in order to make something out of myself to be successful or what yep. you want to call that. And I'm like, wait a second. And like the first person that kind of opened my eyes up was like Tash Sultana. <clears throat> I don't know if you know her, but you know, she's Australian. You might know her. <laughs> my friend actually um support no, she supported him at a gig like way before she was anywhere. Like no anyone way. Oh my god. I know. God. And I actually I re- I had a photo of the the um the bill out the front like with who was playing at this little pub and I had my friend you know headlining and then little writing Taj Sultana underneath (laughs) (laughs) so I said that to him yeah it's amazing yeah she's phenomenal yeah and and you everyone knows her in Australia I'm pretty sure but you know she's pretty big over here as well and I got to see her live I think she was like the last biggest act that I got to see before the lockdown oh wow yep so I got to see her in Vienna and it was just absolutely mad and insane. It was like probably one of my favorite concerts I've been to. Wow. Her energy is just nuts. Like that girl is just insane. And she started out with just busking and just yep. music, just making music because she loved it. And yep. that's what's so addicting. You can tell that that is, she's breathed. That's the air she's breathing and you know now she's like signed and stuff but like she started with nothing she started literally with nothing and I'm like oh if oh oh okay Mm -hmm. like she was like the first one that kind of opened my eyes to like you don't need that it's not this all or nothing there are so many stages in between and you know I I just kind of see this podcast for like an average Joe to come on here and because that's what we all are like we're, we're not like I mean, there's always room up. I'm not saying that we're not going to be the next Taylor Swift, uh, but, (laughs) you know, hair toss, Um, you know, but, you know, it's important to have that, the mindset, the right mindset, the the right expectations um, and defining what success is. Because like you said, when you first bought your 500 copies for your CD, right? Even if you sell 10 of them or 20 of them, that's a success. Like, but um, obviously your expectations. Completing like, a, that project is a success. Yeah. Like that was huge. Like for someone that's had no training, no experience doing yeah. it all on your own. Like, totally. yeah, we don't give ourselves enough credit. Like we're no. measuring ourselves against an impossible metric there. Like they have entire teams, uh, teams yeah. that are just in charge for one thing. 